Jesus is Lord. Well, hello, brothers and sisters. You're probably realizing we're not continuing in the upper room chamber, continuing in that sermon series. And the simple reason is because I didn't do more preaching in my church. It'll probably come in the future. I'll be able to continue the series. But until then, let's take a little break and come to the epistles to the Philippians. It's a series I've done in the past in the church, and I hope to do with you now. This is one of the four epistles Paul wrote while he was in prison, as we see in Acts chapter 28. So there's Philippians and Ephesians and Colossians and Philemon. And speaking of Acts chapter 28, uh, when you turn back to Acts chapter 16, you find the establishment of the church of Philippi, or the Philippian church. I highly encourage you to go read it for yourself to see when Paul and his new fellow servant, Timothy, with his friend Silas or Silvanus, goes together to Philippi. And they meet up with Lydia, with other women who are uh, praying at the river, and she comes to the Lord. And also that young lady who's uh, possessed by a demon of Python, but also uh, the jailer. So the church that Paul is writing to will most probably was contained by um, this Lydia and her family, this jailer and his family, and maybe even this young lady who, after she was delivered from the demon, came to the Lord Jesus, and probably many more. Now, the, the city of Philippi uh, was a colony, which means people were free and could actually be pretty blessed within the Roman Empire. Lydia was probably very well, uh, well-to-do. So it means the church did have some money, but still, being a Christian back then means also a lot of resistance and persecution. So even though they gave Paul many gifts, as he tells them in the letter, it probably cost them something. So this book has been called, in many, the book of joy. Because Paul, again and again, comes back to that refrain to rejoice in the Lord. It's a bit cliche, even. Over and over, Paul is telling to rejoice to have the joy of the Lord. It's, it's almost like a, a mantra that is just repeated within these pages. It's the theme of Philippians. Now, why did Paul write this letter, to be precise? We can't be sure 100%, but um, it's interesting because he doesn't need to deal with serious issues, uh, heresies, or sin, like, let's say, the Corinthian church or the Galatian churches or um, even the Colossian church, which has serious uh, false teachers there. But at the same time, it's not just a letter about theology like Ephesians or Romans. It seems to be somewhere in the middle, a bit like Thessalonians, where Paul is, is um, rejoicing what's going on, warning you about certain things that could happen, but also giving them some, some good, solid teaching as well. Now, some of the problems that are kind of showing up seems to be false teachers at the door. Most probably Judaizers, people who really run to bring the law of Moses and circumcision into the Christian faith. And I say this because he talks about the true Israel and be watchful of the false ones, the false circumcision, because the true Israel is the one in faith. So they're probably there, and Baba's saying, don't let them in. <clears throat> Another problem is uh, some division that's slightly starting to manifest, a bit like like, uh, you know, mushrooms on a tree slowly starting to manifest. You have, at chapter 4, two women who are kind of in disagreement. Or in chapter 2, we, we see the possibility that there were some who consider themselves a bit more spiritual, more faithful. Now they would say, like, I'm fire for the Lord. And the mentality usually we have with being on fire for the Lord is only surround yourself with other fiery Christians. Well, chapter 2 would kind of destroy that idea. Because the call is to actually put the other ones first. The other ones see them as better than you. No matter what you might think, you see them as better than you. And he gives the example of Jesus. Yeah, Philippians is one of the two uh, epistles where there's an amazing Christological focus, uh, doxology. Colossians is the first one, Philippians is the other one. Where he talks about how Jesus did not see uh, something to, to hold on to, to be equal to God. That's found here. And it's used to tell them, like, don't think you're so hot. Because Jesus is the hottest of all fiery Christians, if you will. But he humbled himself for sinners, rebels. So don't think you're better than him. 
Now, I hope this encourages you to go read for yourself the book of Philippians. To prepare yourself for next week. At least read chapter one. To get into the mindset, what is this book about? And what is it so useful to? Because I, it shouldn't be a ball about what I bring. But really, like I said, my, my desire of this future channel is to bring people back to the word of God. To enjoy it for themselves. I love the book of Philippians for a few reasons. Um, it contains two of my favorite verses. First, uh, Philippians 1, chapter 21. For me, Christ is gain. Uh, Christ is, is life and, and death is gain. How beautiful is that? Christ is life, death is gain. But also chapter 1, verse 27, where it tells us that not only did God give us the grace to believe in him, the unmerited gift to have this faith in him, but also to suffer for him. It kind of breaks apart this modern Christian mentality here in the West that Christian life is all about like, being blessed by God and stuff like that. Uh, no, God's plan for the church is that we also get to suffer, and that's a gift. Think of that. Life first to put in your wall, you have the gift of suffering for God, for Christ's name. Kind of weird, right? It's also in Philippians that we meet up with the two main uh, uh, ministers of the church. The um, elder, pastor, overseer, and deacon servants. Where one leads and the other one serves. Where Paul teaches Timothy what the qualifications for these two ministries are. Well, in Philippians, we see that they're there and they're thriving because Paul... Uh, says hi to these overseers and the deacons of Philippi. So they're there. They're present. So again, I hope this has given you an interest to go see for yourself and to continue with this series together as we see each other next video and we jump into this wonderful text. That said, brothers and sisters, He's gonna burn it away, the holy furnace will blaze. Eternal the day, somebody come on.